again. Uh, I'm back with the second part of the tutorial um, with the Princess Fairy Humphrey uh, from the Crafters Companion uh, stamps. And I'm going to be coloring her tutu using the pinks as I promised. And the colors I have are the cools from that pink starter set. Um, the one that I showed you in the tutorial with the six colors. This is the cool set. I don't know if that's going to come into focus. Probably not. Okay, so I'll just read it off. Um, the lightest color is PL1. The mid-range color is BP2. And the darkest color is BP6. And I'm going to color over the whole uh, skirt of the tutu in the lightest color, which is PL1. And here we go. So I have a problem chewing gum and walking. So if there's if there's like dead air or complete silence while I'm doing this, it's because I have issues. So here we go. Um, so And you're actually going to be able to see these wonderful nibs at work. I actually love them. I didn't think I was going to, to be quite honest. I, th I was really worried, and I wrote a blog post about that. I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to color with these nibs when in fact it turns out that I absolutely love them. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the palette blending that I do with these and just how easy these markers, it, it's magical. So I'm laying, laying down my, um, my lightest color and I'm going to use this pen to point out some things. So when you're coloring um, folds or pleats, really look at the artist's rendering of the image because where you see these peaks and valleys, that's where you're going to be placing in your darks and light colors. The lightest colors are going to be on the peaks because that's the one, that's the area of the um, image that's going to be closest to whatever your light source is. I'm going to say the sun. And then down in here is where it would be the darkest. So I go ahead and lay that in. So right here where the fabric is gathering, it would be dark. And then right around the arm. And then in these little valleys. And just, I was popping it in. I'm just gonna put this other color, I'm gonna butt it right up against just butt it right up against and all I'm doing is I'm just beginning the the blend process it you can kind of see it's already doing it on its own I'm not really doing a lot and then I'm gonna take the darkest color and let me zoom out just a little let me go the right way here I'm going to move this over just a smidge so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And I'm actually going to color a little... I don't know if you can see. Oh, there we go. A little spot right on my glass board. This is actually a glass, a glass mat that I use quite a bit to color on. Uh, for that, this reason is because it cleans off really easy, and I can um, I can put a whole bunch of colors all over. And if you look here, I don't know if I can do this. Let me zoom out some more. You can see I did red and purple. <laughs> so that's how I did that. Oh, there we go. And to do the palette blending, one it, it's dry. It's completely dry. Once you do the palette blending, you're just going to take your, your middle color or your lightest color. In this case, I'm using the lightest color, and I'm just picking up some of the color to put it on the tip. Oh, you can see that? The tip of the nib. Sorry about my nails, you guys. So that's how the palette blending works for this. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to pull. I'm going to use that to pull the dark into the light. Ta-da! Blended. The first one's completely done. That Could that have been easier? Seriously, that is so easy. I'm going to pull the dark into the light. 
Ta-da! Completely blended. Like no muss, no fuss. And again, pull that dark into the light. This one needs a little bit more, I think. Ta-da! Blended. It's like magic. And the last one, I'm doing more stippling on this one than anything because it's such a small spot. And the last one, there you go. Then I'm going to clean off my nib because you always, whenever you're doing palette blending, um, and you're always using the lightest color to pick up the darkest color. Whichever colors you're using, you decide to use for palette blending. The lightest color is actually going to act as a brush. So you want to make sure that you clean that off before you put the pen cap back on. And I'm just going to go over these light areas just one more time. Make sure I have a really good blend. And then I like it. And actually, I think I love it. Let me pick up just a tiny bit more. and throw in some more dark right there. Oh, I love it. So that's how easy it is. I, yeah, I can't get over how easy this, this coloring system is. So, <laughs> so hopefully you guys see how easy it is too and you can dive right in and it really does, doesn't take much. Oh, my phone just dinged again, that's so nice. I'm popular today. Anyway, <laughs> so you're kind of seeing how easy this is um, to get to get those color ranges and to get exactly what you're looking for. And I don't know about you, but that pink, this pink right here is awesome. I love the pinks from the Spectrum Noir line. So until next time, you guys, happy coloring. And please let me know how you're doing um, with this system if you get it. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.